Brian. I'm Chris. And this is Team Aquascape. <laughs> we are going to build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. Hey, it's Brian from Team Aquascape. And Chris from Team Aquascape. Chris, man, we haven't been on the same video together in a long time. I know. This is kind of fun. So you guys remember last week, we talked about cleaning our rec pond. And so I thought the guy that should clean it should be this guy. Right? Sure. <laughs> Cause I don't want to. No, I actually have an idea. Chris, I remember a couple weeks ago, you saying, hey, does it make sense for us just to get in here, drain this thing, power wash it, start it all over. And then I started thinking of my pond and how I've been telling viewers that have been watching my pond and following my pond, how I haven't had to drain and clean it in 13 years. And this pond, like, look at the water clarity. Pristine. It's really, really clear. And I know it's that much healthier for the fish if we can just kind of let this thing be. Sure. Now, there's some things we do have to clean. Like, if we can try to remove as much of the algae out of there as possible and so on and so on, we're going to try to do that. But the way I've always treated my pond is the way I want to kind of try to treat this. Just use our water treatment products. Okay. Like, I've always used the pro-grade bacteria mm -hmm. and then the pro-grade SAB because we didn't have this guy, the XT Smart Pond Dosing System. Yep. So I'm gonna be installing one of these on my pond. I think we need to get this on here. We need to get our bacteria in here, mm -hmm. get that stuff colonized. And then I still wanna use the professional SAB stuff because it'll really start going against some of that string algae. If it's okay with you guys and you, maybe more you, maybe more, I don't know. It's you. okay for the both of us. <laughs> I love using this net for removing a lot of that string algae. The reason I like this one, when you start taking that string algae, a lot of the little pieces fall through the It'll holes in this apart. one. This one will really yeah. grab a sure. lot of it. So we can just kind of go around and scoop out as much of that stuff as we possibly can. And it's right at the point where, you know when the string algae goes from like that lime green to kind of darker green? Yep. It really means it's kind of dying off. Mm -hmm. So if we can remove a lot of that dying string algae, yeah. get any of the other debris out of here. Now it's the intake bay, yep. really good. Let's get the heaters out of here. Leave the bubblers until we get the fountains running. You're gonna have to show our viewers, your fans, what happened and what kind of mistake was made. I think I have an idea what happened. You investigate, get in there, and show them how to fix all that and the big no-no. Like we made a huge no-no and even after 28 years of doing this, we still make some big no-no. The other thing we need to look at is the XT pumps. There's no way the flow that's coming out of these jets is correct. So we have to remove as much solid debris as we possibly can, fix the plumbing on the wall and refigure some of the plumbing configuration to make that easier to winterize. I'll let you go through all of this stuff sure. as you install it with our fans, There you go. right? <laughs> our viewers and kind of go over this, the purpose of it, and then just give them some tips on like how to scoop that stuff out of there. Sure. I think it would also be important to show them why we're okay using our water treatment products on this pond versus the other pond you're gonna take them to and show them how to clean that pond. Yep. And why that one you're draining and power washing mm -hmm. and doing everything else. Sure. All right. Absolutely. Call me if you need help. Okay. Maybe don't. <laughs> <laughs> So I've got kind of a laundry list of things I need to take care of here in the intake bay before I start to remove all the algae and large debris from the pond. The reason I need to work over here is right now something is clogging this EXT pump that I have over here and I'm not getting quite the top water draw that we were originally. The reason I want that top water draw is so that when I start stirring everything up, there will be that suction or that hole into this intake area of anything that I can't get with the net itself. All the other suspendeds will hopefully get into this area, just making the clean out part of the process that much easier. I'm gonna go ahead and dive into this. Why don't you guys enjoy us doing a clean up and see how we do a clean out in residential backyard when we are actually draining the pond, pulling the fish out and all the steps to start up a pond. So we'll see you guys in a little bit, all right? I am out here with Josh Duffy and a couple of our new guys as well as Steve and Tyler. We are doing a spring clean out training, but today I thought I might as well just take the opportunity while we're out here and give you guys an inside peek as to how we profitably and efficiently run a spring clean out. Let's go ahead and get started. Here is the water feature that we are going to be cleaning today. We are out here today to get this pond cleaned out, started up for the season. You can see he already has some fish. The water feature has stayed running throughout the winter and you can actually hear the pump cavitating down in the skip. And I would assume it's because this basket is chock full of debris and it most certainly is. So first things first, we want to get this pond drained as soon as possible. So the guys have already set up their 500 gallon collapsible holding tanks. One is more than enough for the body of the pond, but we brought a second one out so that while things are getting picked, uh, we can go ahead and start filling the other one with water and that will help us rinse later on in the process. And not only are we getting the debris all inside the pond as much as we can, but we're also gonna wanna try and get a lot of the stuff that's on the perimeter or it's all on the edges. We don't wanna leave a lot of loose debris out in the landscape. So we'll go ahead and go 
through and kind of clean up a little bit more of this stuff just to prevent it from falling in the pond. Pond now being drained, as you can see behind us. We want to get that done, get that started right away because we do not want to wait to get in this pond and start picking all that debris. Go ahead and kill the pump. We know that it runs. So now what we'll do, disconnect the check valve, let all the water drain out from the biofalls. At that time, disconnecting the check valve, all the water will drain out from up there. The filter media needs to come out of the biofalls immediately. And we'll use some of that water that's coming out of the pond to help rinse off that filter media. While that filter media is being cleaned, somebody will be up here while that water is draining down and just hand picking all of the debris debris out of the stream. Check out when the pump is disconnected, go ahead and make sure that door stays down. Yeah. Open it. There yep, you there you go. The debris is getting picked. Always try and start from the top down as the pond is draining. When putting clean out pumps into a pond, a lot of times it's a good idea to lay those pumps on their sides so that they're not sucking up all that sediment and debris from the very, very bottom. And that's super important when trying to take as much of this usable water and getting into those classical tanks as possible. So here we are cleaning off the filter mats using the water from the pond and the clean out hose. The clean out pump is about a 4,000 gallon per hour pump, so it's a lot more pressure and water volume than your typical garden hose. It just helps really kind of clean that stuff off. A lot of times, what we'll do too, go ahead and set it down on top of the storm grate. All right, go ahead, knock all that stuff through, and flip it over. Notice how Matt is over here standing right over the storm sewer drain. It's always nice if you have an area like this on a property where you can discharge all that dirty water. Plus that surface drain, that lid, is just a nice thing to kind of beat those filter pads against to help knock all of that solid or that heavier sediment out from the middle of the pad and helps you be able to clean those filter pads that much quicker. The nice thing about it too is that's where everything's going to be drained from this pond. So all the dirty water as we go to clean and as we're rinsing will all go down into that storm sewer. If you're on a property that doesn't have a storm sewer, find a low line area or make sure that you clarify with the homeowner where they would like you to discharge that water so that you're not making a sloppy muddy mess. Odds are they are going to have a much better idea where to put it than you will in case they have neighbors that are a little bit more particular. They don't want any water on a certain part of their property so on and so forth. So make sure that you iron out those little details ahead of time and that all happens in the phone call before. We're just getting the last bit of debris out. We're going to get this pond drain. Make sure that we get all of the fish out. They have been put now into the holding tank. With this holding tank we're going to go ahead and throw a Pro Air 60 with a diffuser on this to oxygenate the water, cycle the water through and just to take good care of the fish. After we put the aerator diffuser in there, we like to cover this with a pond net, like one of our leaf debris nets that we put down or put over ponds during fall nettings, but we will cover this entire thing and that will help prevent the fish from actually jumping out uh, this container. So Steve and the rest of the guys have the pond virtually 80% picked free of debris. What we want to have happen now is our pressure washing because what we want to have done is this whole pond pressure wash by the time it is completely picked and then we can start rinsing. As the top got picked, you hop there, pressure wash. The guys move their way down into the pond, start hand picking as much of that debris as they can, getting it ready for Steve to pressure wash. After Steve is done pressure washing the stream, somebody will hop back up behind him and go ahead and start rinsing all that stuff down, pushing all that dirty water and all the crap that he kicks up for pressure washing washing down into the base of the pond, down to the cleanup pumps, and then discharge. 85% is about where we want to be before we start pressure washing. So pressure washing is now done. You can see Tyler's up here rinsing out that stream and every he's flushing all of that sediment and stuff to get kicked up through the pressure washer downstream, which eventually will make its way down to the clean-out pump. And then you get Steve over here also cleaning. Notice all the top shelves first, right? We don't want to clean the bottom and then clean the stuff on the top. It doesn't make sense to do it that way. One thing I wanted to point out while Steve was pressure washing is he worked his way from, again, the top down. He got the stream, got the stream taken care of first, which allowed Tyler to hop up there when he was done pressure washing and as he was doing that he finished pressure washing the rest of it he started at one side kind of worked his way around and then went all the way down and then got the bottom do yourselves a favor do not jump around sometimes you just have to it's nice to just start at one side and just kind of work your way back out of the pond now, at this time before you really rinse everything you want to address any light issues that way if lights need to be replaced what they can see is happening over there you do all of that stuff before you rinse everything down because nothing would stink more then if you go rinse everything get the water running nice and clean and then you go to replace a light 
concrete and then pull a couple rocks apart and then unearth a large amount of sediment. We don't want to be tearing these ponds apart while we're cleaning them and then putting them back together, but that's sometimes what we need to do in order to hide the lighting cables. So do all the lighting work first before you rinse. Target all that stuff. When you get here, turn the transformer on, see what lights are working, which ones aren't that way. Once pressure washing is done, we can target those bad fixtures and get those things swapped out before we go through and rinse and do any potential double work. Notice how they're using the clean out pumps in different areas. There's a pooling area right there behind forest. So a lot of times what we'll do is we'll just drop one right there in that pooling area just to help pull a lot of that dirty water and disallow from getting down to the bottom. Areas like this where there's a low area and mulch and dirt debris is starting to fall in. What we do is we would want to put a rock right there just to help hold all that stuff back to keep it from getting in that stream and waterfall area. If there's any bare liner, we also want to make sure that we're covering all that up as well as we're working our way out. So just some of those little things that need to be done as we're working our way through so that when we do leave, this pond is in great shape. So now that the biofalls is clean and the filter media is clean, Noah's gonna go ahead and put this stuff back together. The filter pad rack goes in first, slides itself in, then he's going to take the two filter pads, nice and clean, put those in. The flat side goes towards the front of the biofalls, and then he's gonna drop the bag of bio balls, which is uh, extra bio media, on top of the pants, and then he'll make sure that the bag holding that stuff is not gonna float to the surface, so he'll go ahead and just weight down that excess part of the bag, put the rock tray back together, and then that way, we can disguise the rock tray and make it look as if there's nothing there other than just the wellhead for this thing. So we are down to the very last section. Heather's down there getting the bottom kind of six square feet nice and clean. Steve has been working on the lights as well as Josh over there just getting the fixtures replaced. What they're gonna do now is get the lights hooked up and then they're also going to be redoing this edge. You can see there was an enormous amount of exposed liner. When I say enormous, it's only about four linear feet, but it's still a lot in my opinion. We wanna make sure that uh, we're not looking at this stuff. So they're gonna go ahead and just finish up this edge by pulling the liner back, putting some new rock and gravel in there and getting everything shipped. -shipped. Um, but other than that, we are almost done and going to be ready to start filling here probably within the next 10 or 15 minutes. So clean out has now been completed. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and drop a clean out pump into the fish tank, putting that water back in the pond. That way we can get the fish back in the pond, but everything else is done and it looks fantastic. Hoses are going away. The garden hose is still in the pond as well. We're gonna go ahead and do that. Ion Gen probe and dosing system bag needs to be replaced. So we're gonna go ahead and do that as well. Okay. We are almost there. is going back in. It's important to not discharge this water right down into a bed of gravel or behind rocks because there is a lot of pressure from these clean out hoses at about 4,000 gallons per hour and what can happen is, is you can dislodge maybe some sediment that didn't come out, didn't completely come out during the clean out process and then you really murk up that water. So we want to have this water be as clean as you can possibly get it. If there's a little bit of sediment left back behind the rocks, that's okay. It's natural. It'll get chewed up through the biological activity happening in the ecosystem. So we want the customer to come back to us crystal clear of a pond as they can and not have them be underwhelmed when we're finished. We want to make sure that as we're getting the water initially out of the pond, we don't stir up a lot of that stuff down in the bottom, murking up that water that has already settled out of suspension prior to us getting here. Make sure you're discharging that water in the right spot when putting it back in. We are going to go ahead and drain this water out. We can go ahead and pull the aerator out and, and get this down to where we can start catching the fish. Toxifier just went in the pond. Pond is almost all the way full. We're gonna go ahead and leave the hose running just a little bit longer. All right, so last thing, Steve is over here going to be putting in a bag of maintain. This is that daily kind of bread and butter water treatment that we want virtually all of our ecosystem ponds to have. I think of it more of kind of a daily multivitamin that you or I would take to keep our bodies in tip top shape. It's the same logic with the bag of maintain for ponds. It's a proprietary blend that has all the enzymes and beneficial bacteria strains and all the good stuff to help keep your pond 
in tip top shape, but it will help keep it nice and clean year round. So essential ingredient, you can see Steve put a new bag in. What he's doing now is he's purging the air out of the system, priming the pump so that it will give it the adequate amount of water treatment that it needs based on the volume of water. This is what a probe that needs to be replaced looks like. So we went ahead and replaced that while we were here. I think next step is to go ahead and plug that pump in and get this waterfall running. Fisher back in, skimmer is doing his job. You can see some of that little wind blowing debris is all getting sucked into that skimmer box. We'll probably clean it one more time before we leave. Pushing everything across the surface, getting drawn into the skimmer. It's exactly where we want it to be. Looks great. Water will continue to clear up over the next 24 hours, but we are done. It is important to remember that this stuff actually is a good thing. The ecosystem is doing its job. Algae is a plant. It's one of those indicator species that's telling you that you have the proper water quality and conditions for plant life to grow as well as the fish to remain healthy. I understand a bunch of it can become unsightly and in this case it is, but still remember that this is an ecosystem. We strive for biomimicry and really want to recreate what mother nature already has out there on planet earth. So this is a good thing. However, when trying to maintain these water features, and eliminate as much of the string algae just for aesthetic purposes, it's important that we manually remove as much as we can before we let the water treatments do their job. The reason for that is we don't want this stuff to die off because it is being starved of its food sources by the different water treatments that we are putting into the pond. You know, the clean is one of those automatic dosing system formulations that we're using on this pond. It has an algicide built in, a phosphate binder, which is going to consume the nutrient load that is actually the food for the algae. So it's gonna tie that up, making it unavailable to the algae. So it'll almost starve the algae and then we also have flocculant built into that which will clump all of that really fine sediment in the water column as we go to break up a lot of this algae you've stirred up this pond considerably that will help lock up a lot of those really fine 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 pieces of debris it will clump up together and get be able to be much more easily managed through filter media as it gets drawn through to the intake bay we're gonna go ahead and take out a little bit more finish up the plumbing and get this pond back up and running got a lion's share of the algae out of here. I still have a couple more little pockets and crannies that I want to get to. You know, I don't really need to get 100% of this out of there because I really want the water treatments to do its job, right? Between the clean and the clear combination that we're using through the XT dosing system, taking away the food stores, but also incorporating, you know, those really big heterotrophic bacteria and those digestive enzymes is all part of the biomimicry and the introduction to the ecosystem to help keep this thing running and help keep this water pristine. It's important to remember too, when you're taking algae out, especially with a net like this, go ahead and leave some of it in the bottom of the net as you're scooping. Don't be emptying the net every single time you scoop. It's nice to have a little bit of weight in there just to act almost as a ballast as you go through the water and the back of the net's kind of not floating around. It gives you a little bit of weight, gives you a lot more control when trying to scrape the algae off the rock. So some of this algae is still sticking to the rocks and it was just really hard for me without destroying my fine net over there to kind of scratch it off. So I'm using this little rake. I'm just using it to just kind of get some of this little stuff down here in the corners that I know I can get and kind of just getting it up on the prongs and then just trying to get it off that way. I'm gonna go ahead and just keep kind of plugging away through here, doing that and it should be good. Chris, we've got the bowls taken down. What the heck are we doing today? Obviously it's a new day. Last thing you guys saw was lion's share of that algae out of the pond. I knew that this was gonna take a little bit of time, so I didn't wanna start that at the end of the day. So now we're diving into the plumbing for those three square patio ponds that are on top of the wall. As you guys saw earlier in the video, the plumbing blew out, right? Water got in the line and froze. We've got the three patio ponds off, pulled apart a lot easier than I thought. I was, along with you, Brian, were a little dreadful of what we were gonna find. <laughs> Fortunately for us, we got the bowls off. We had a series of aqua 
block panels in there, fine filter mats, and then a biofalls mat in there. And you could really tell that that was helping polish the water. A little extra filtration, mechanical and maybe a little bit biological as well, was happening. So right now that we've got the bowls off, we're gonna go ahead and rework all this plumbing. So we're gonna rip all of this stuff out and put new flex one inch PVC in there, do all of our elbows, plumb the bowls the way we normally would, get them all leveled off, and then we'll finish the rest of this stuff down mm -hmm. and through here. What's your theory on why did the lines crack? We need to share with everybody um, how we're gonna do this different. I but we're definitely gonna share with you guys screwed up. <laughs> when I made the lids for the top of the bowls, there was a little part right at the spillway that we cut out or notched out to help them spill into the little like sun deck area of the pond, if you will. And they just didn't quite fit and a little bit of water got down inside and it got into the plumbing. And fortunately for us, the bowls themselves didn't crack, but when that water drained down through the plumbing, it siphoned back and I think froze in some of these areas. I guess I'll take credit for the dumb, dumb mistake. I think the other thing we'll do too is so you can see we have these solid lines that run through here or, or two solid lines right here one's clearly not they come down go like this go down and they tee off of the main line that feeds the wetland and then we've got these three ball valves sitting right here i think if next year what we do or this year we'll set this up let's put three unions right here we can just just, completely just disconnect these whole things that way if any water were to get back in the bowls we can it'll just rain back out by gravity through this thing and then we can just hook them back up in yep. the spring so we'll make it better you yep. know even after all these years we're still screwing stuff up and hopefully with our mistakes you guys don't make mistakes and you guys probably never would have made that mistake just this ding dong I'll take <laughs> all right let's see how easy it is to pull these pipes out of here That would slow down the flow of the pump. <laughs> All right, so the one pump was clearly clogged, and I know why. Over here on our vaults, there's a hole on the side of this where our plumbing is designed to come out of. Well, with this one, we didn't bring our plumbing through there, but we left the hole open. All the debris that came into our intake bay, instead of it sitting around floating in here, takes the path least resistance, goes through that hole, got into our vault, and clogged it. This one, I'm not expecting it to be clogged. There's not a lot of room for debris to get back in here, but while I'm here, I might as well disconnect all this, check the pump, make sure it's good, and then put it all back together. So we've got a ball valve here. We close this one. I've got a ball valve over here. We'll close this one. That'll stop all the water from leaking back in here. And then we just put this union fitting on. <laughs> and simply you just twist it. <laughs> Woo. Twist that, and then we need to put a union here so we can come in, if we ever need to service the pump, then we just pull this whole thing out. But because we don't have a union, we'll cut it and put one on. <laughs> So now that we have these patio ponds off of the top of the wall, you can see there's an enormous amount of scale buildup that is accumulated on the outside of the bowl. We wanna clean this up before we put them back on rather than trying to wash them while they're four feet in the air. So these are painted GFRCs. It's a glass fiberglass reinforced product, but this is all painted. I know a lot of you out there might wanna take a pressure washer to this or something of that nature to try and get this scale off. The problem with doing that is you potentially could take the paint off with the pressure washer itself, depending on how high PSI it is. So a product that we use is the rock and fountain cleaner and what this will do is this will help break down all of that scale making it much easier to get off without running the risk of stripping the paint off when you pressure wash. So apply it liberally and you're gonna take a small scour pad it'll smell a little bit like vinegar but you can see how well this stuff works. Get a lot of that stuff off. See how it just breaks through all that scale. And I didn't run the risk of ruining the paint finish on here. Just one of those products you might want to have in your bag, especially if you're maintaining a lot of these fountainscape products that are painted. So Aquascape Rocket Fountain Cleaner. Boom. Open this up, that'll allow the water to prime the pump. Come back over here, we got our new union on. We're gonna open this one up and then we should be able to plug this in and see the jets running a whole lot better than they are now. We 
actually put these little elbows on so we can control how much we want the surface to agitate versus the bottom. So if I wanted to put this jet even down, I could just twist this elbow because I didn't glue it. And then this looks calm up here. If in the winter we take this and we twist it up, it'll keep a huge hole open in the ice. In the summer, I like it calm. We'll go there. Let's fire up the second one. We don't have the bowls running, but at least we can get the wetland going. So this is good. Both of the pumps were clogged, which was definitely hindering the flow. If the flow is not correct, then the water treatments aren't gonna work, the wetland's not gonna work, the jets aren't gonna work, and it's all part of the system. I can't stay alive with just my kidneys. I kinda need my heart too, and <laughs> you guys know what I'm saying. But look at the difference just in the flow coming through here right now. Like that water is screaming into our intake bay. So we're gonna be pulling all of this surface debris, and I can see surface debris all just kinda migrating to this point. It's coming in here. The one thing we're gonna have to be very vigilant is coming in here and cleaning this thing. This is gonna be a daily process right now, especially through the spring, as we get seeds off of the river birches, stuff off the oaks, other wind-blown debris that's moving around during the spring. We just gotta make sure we keep this thing as clean as possible so the biological filter can be really working on what it's supposed to be doing, breeding more bacteria, not removing more solid. I'm so happy that this is just running. In a couple more minutes, we'll have those things running. That'll be cool. Chris, look at how much better the jets are. That's better than the day we installed it. I would agree. Can you see the excitement on his face? <laughs> Plumbing now is done. It was way less involved than we originally thought, thank goodness. So now we can go ahead and turn this pump back on, make sure there's no leaks with any of the plumbing. Fingers crossed. As long as that's good to go, then we can go ahead and get that XT dosing system in here and go ahead and get that clean and clear combination introduced into this pond, start that seeding process so that we can get this pond crystal clear and in pristine working order. Cool. Ready? Mm -hmm. So now that we've got the bowls up and running and everything looks fantastic, I have the VP of product development here, Mr. Dave Kelly himself. We're gonna talk a little bit about water treatments. Now, originally in the video, we talked about using these two water treatments. I've got the clean and the clear, and we talked about what they do. But Dave, after talking with you, yeah. you thought the formulation, and I totally agree, and I'm thankful that we had the conversation, but why don't you fill in our viewers as to why you're holding a bottle of Maintain? Yeah, so like basically the Maintain itself is kind of the bread and butter of the dosing system. It, it's a cocktail, a formulation of our top water treatments. You actually you have a heterotrophic bacteria, which is a digesting bacteria. You have a lithotrophic bacteria, which is your nitrifying bacteria. And then you have your dechlorinator in here. So as you're topping water off in the city, it's dechlorinating stuff for you. This is kind of like the go-to for the dosing system. The other ones here, kind of problem solvers. The clean, it's a bacteria, but it's heavy, heavy on the digesting bacteria. So your heterotrophic organic debris. So if you have a pond that has a lot of debris, junk, and organic matter in it, that's an awesome one to use. But for an overall all around, this is probably the better thing. With the clear, that's also a problem solving bacteria. Bacteria. So yep. clear is going to be if you have water quality problems, water clarity problems, if you have you know junk attached to your rocks and your waterfalls and stuff. That actually is a cocktail that has our rapid clear, which is a flocculant that's yep. going to clear the water, get that crystal clear water. It's got SAB, a phosphate binder in mm -hmm. it, so that's going to lock up nutrients. That things you don't want to use, they're going to use that. Right. Some other special sauce in it that actually really does a good job of solving water quality, water clarity problems. So, so the flocculant is basically like taking all those really fine suspended particles and clumping them together yeah, into correct. bigger things and yep. then they can get drawn into and the then filter. And then get drawn and then... in and filtered out. Right. Good combination for this water feature here would be actually using maintain yep. and then using clear. Yep. You can use the dosing system. You'd set two control panels up and you run them side by side simultaneously. So yep. you're actually you know maintaining any water clear quality clarity issues and then this is going to be the one that's going to take care of all your bacteria, your enzymes, the health of the ecosystem, yes. the wetland system and all that. Right. And the great thing about the XT dosing system too and the automatic dosing system is that you can program it to the volume of water that you're treating right. and we're going to be using 3X formulations right on this, which doesn't mean that it's going to last three times as long. It means that it's three it's, times it's more concentrated. concentrated. Right. And the dosing system is calibrated then to know that, hey, this is being used on a larger water feature. Yeah. So you're using this stuff. So you're not out here babysitting, replacing these bottles all the time. Right. It'll last you longer period to treat a bigger volume of water. So I was kind of on the right track, but being that this pond, the way it was designed, the environment that it's in is we still want to have the heterotrophic bacteria, but we also want all it's the other here. good stuff that's yeah. in the maintain. There's not a lot of sludge and organics that are actually accumulating right. in the pond because of the construction methods that were used when the 
installed it, that it's kind of newer, stuff. newer pond too. Newer you pond. You came back to this pond five years from now and you have some monster fish in there and lots of fish and lots of feeding and maybe you do have a lot of debris and sludge that's building up throughout yeah. the season, then that clean would be one you actually want to put on there because yeah. that would just be feed and digest or bacteria in there. But again, these are more problem solvers, right? Whereas this is your daily bread and yeah. butter is the main thing. I'm so glad that you came over and you're like, Chris, you're an idiot, let's <laughs> do this. <laughs> I see that all the time, dude. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get these things installed and we'll show you guys how easy this is. Huh? The neat thing about this system is they actually have a low water treatment device on here. So this has a float on there that's attached to the control panel and it will actually let us know when there's only 10% remaining in this bottle of water treatment. And it'll send an alert if you're connected to the app prompting you to purchase more water treatments. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this last bottle. This is that bottle of Maintain. This is the one that Dave talked about being the bread and butter and the essential cocktail for your water feature. So we're gonna go ahead and get this installed. So it's so easy, even I can figure it out. All right, I'm gonna drop this thing in here go ahead and insert the suction line so one of the really cool things about the xt dosing system as well as the automatic dosing system itself is it's feeding your body of water the water treatment it needs regularly so up to 12 times a day this thing is actually giving it the maintain the clean the clear whatever formulation you have in there as opposed to the pump top bottles or the powder applications that we were doing weekly now your water feature is getting it virtually constantly right so you're not having to wait a whole week before you go to dose it again so not only is it convenient but it takes a lot of that guesswork out of it as well and you also don't have to remember it's going ahead and taking care of that for you which is great we're gonna go ahead and program this thing to the volume of water that's inside the water feature close it up and it should be good to go so if you guys are ever in doubt or questioning how long these bottles of water treatment are actually going to last there is a qr code on the back of the bottle that will tell you not only what number to set the dosing system itself to but it will also tell you the estimated days of treatment in that bottle so i went ahead and took a picture or clicked the link when i brought up the qr code on my camera and we're gonna go ahead and figure this out all right so i went ahead and adjusted it to number nine which corresponds to the chart that I have. We're about 13,000 gallons in here. So I went ahead and did it to the 13,500. And this should last us, according to the chart, about 36 days per bottle of water treatment. So that's awesome to know. So I'll put a little calendar alert on my phone for every 30 days, we'll come out, make sure we're good to go. But we'll also connect this dosing system to the app and set up the low water treatment alerts and make sure we get those push notifications so that we know when it comes time, when 90% of this water treatment is done or used, we can come back out and start to replace it. Also, one thing you wanna do when in introducing fresh bottles of water treatment is you want to prime the pump and that's purging all the air out of the system. So to do that, you want to come over here and you're going to press and hold the X2 button right here. Press it, there you go, and press and hold. And what'll happen is now this cartridge in here, it's going to consistently spin until it has purged all the air out of the system. Once all the air is out, then it can go ahead and dose it accordingly based on the setting that you programmed it to. It's so easy, a dummy like me can figure it out. All right, well set. All right, so you guys got to see kind of two different styles of cleanouts here. One, you got to see us over at Jeff's where we did the entire cleanout process from start to finish where we drain the pond, pull the fish out, put them in a holding tank, pressure wash, rinse everything, put everything back together. And then you also got to see kind of what we're experimenting with over here on a much larger body of water, but a clean out using just manual debris removal and then relying on our water treatments. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'm gonna be periodically checking back in on this pond and you guys are actually going to follow along with me, making sure that this pond is doing exactly what we think it's gonna do. So hold on for the ride and keep tuning back in.